Millions believe God exists. Few have proof or even no proof exists. Have you proven God exists? Or do you hope, suspect, feel, believe, think He does? Can His existence be scientifically proven? Can you know with certainty that an all-intelligent mind created the universe and all life on earth, including you? Must the answers be accepted on faith? This series covers the existence of God and will be among the most important you ever watch. In under two hours, you will see it is impossible for God not to exist. Not just improbable or that the case is strong. Impossible. All doubt of His existence will vanish. You will also see how God describes atheists. This series squarely faces basic questions. To those with an open mind, it will be life-changing. The World to Come. The Restored Church of God presents David C. Pack. People have debated the existence of God for thousands of years. Most conclude it cannot be proven one way or the other. The majority think the answer lies in abstract philosophy and the metaphysical. Others become agnostics, asserting they don't know if God exists. Those who do accept His existence often do so passively, merely because they were taught it from childhood. Some don't care. Many of these cannot be moved from their apathy. Atheists, having concluded God does not exist, represent a special category God describes. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You will learn why God twice calls atheists fools. Almost 50 years ago, I learned of absolute proof God exists. My studies lasted two and a half years. I came to realize I did not have to accept His existence on faith. Science has learned much more, and the case for God is now airtight. This broadcast begins presenting numerous absolute proofs God does exist. Some proofs will amaze you, others will inspire you, still others will surprise or even excite you. All of them will fascinate you with their simplicity. You will soon never again doubt God's existence. In fact, just part one will convince you. We will first examine some traditional proofs and then consider material at the cutting edge of scientific proof before returning to older proofs. We will explore astronomy, biology, chemistry, and mathematics. A second great question is unavoidable and inseparable from the question of God's existence. Whether there is life on earth because of blind, dumb luck through evolution or because of special creation by a supreme being. Did all life on earth evolve over millions of years, as evolutionists assert, or did an all-powerful God author it? Most people assume evolution is true, just as millions assume God's existence. I also studied evolution versus creation in depth during the same period I sought to prove God's existence. I learned it takes far more faith to believe the intellectually fashionable evolutionary myth than that God exists. In fact, I learned evolution is based entirely on faith because no true facts or proof have ever been found to support it. We offer an eye-opening, powerful, and inspiring brochure, Evolution, Facts, Fallacies, and Implications, that complements this series. Those who read it will never again doubt the scientific case for creation or the silliness of evolution. Faith does play a role in the life of a Christian. For the one who truly wants to see God and learn to please Him, notice, Without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Faith is vital to a Christian. You saw that without it no one can please God. This verse says those seeking God must believe that He is. But a deep belief in a God who rewards all who diligently seek Him requires proof of His existence. Only after proof has been nailed down can one have faith, absolute confidence that what he does is being recorded in God's mind to be remembered when he receives his reward. If you are uncertain God exists because proof has not been firmly established, 
Under fire, your faith will wane or collapse, I promise. The Apostle Paul wrote, Though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things. Howbeit there is not in every man that knowledge. The religions of this world have created many gods of wood, stone, and other materials. Others exist only in the minds of men. The ancient Greeks alone served 30,000 gods, and modern Hindus worship 5 million gods. Truly, there are and always have been gods many and lords many. Yet God created all the physical materials men use to design and make their own gods. Sadly, there is not in every man knowledge of the true God. Such incredible ignorance and confusion. The Bible's God has shown the way to peace, happiness, and abundant life for all people willing to study His instruction book. This would rid mankind of the confusion and evils that encompass this world. Of course, some don't want this God to exist because if He does, they must obey Him. Be willing to accept science. As we reason, do not suppose or hope. Stand on indisputable facts. We will see them from a broad array of different kinds of science. They will demonstrate that an all-powerful supreme being of infinite intelligence carefully provided more than sufficient proof to remove all doubt he exists. Now, before starting this study, remember, assumptions don't count. Neither do superstitious myths or traditions based on ignorance. What can be known from science? Only accept facts. Think rationally and clearly. Then accept what can be proven. The following excerpts are from a Wall Street Journal article, Science Increasingly Makes the Case for God. It demonstrates why it is impossible for God not to exist. It's long but powerful. It begins... In 1966, Time magazine ran a cover story asking, Is God Dead? I remember it. Many have accepted the cultural narrative that He's obsolete, that as science progresses, there is less need for a God to explain the universe. The relatively recent case for His existence comes from a surprising place, science itself. The same year Time featured the now famous headline, the astronomer Carl Sagan announced that there were two important criteria for a planet to support life, the right kind of star and the right distance from that star. Given the roughly octillion, one followed by 27 zeros, planets in the universe, there should have been about septillion, one followed by 24 zeros, planets capable of supporting life. With such spectacular odds, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, a large, expensive collection of private and publicly funded projects launched in the 1960s was sure to turn up something soon. Scientists listened with a vast radio telescopic network for signals that resembled coded intelligence and were not merely random. But as years passed, the silence from the rest of the universe was deafening. As of 2014, researchers have discovered precisely nothing. This is already an enormous statement. Take it in before we continue. As our knowledge of the universe increased, it became clear that there were far more factors necessary for life than Sagan supposed. His two parameters grew to 10, and then 20, and then 50. And so the number of potentially life-supporting planets decreased accordingly. The number dropped and kept on plummeting. As factors continued to be discovered, the number of possible planets hit zero and kept going. In other words, the odds turned against any planet in the universe supporting life, including this one. Probability said that even we, Earth, shouldn't be here. Today, there are more than 200 known parameters necessary for a planet to support life every single one of which must be perfectly met or the whole thing falls apart. 
without a massive planet like Jupiter nearby, for instance, whose gravity will draw away asteroids a thousand times as many would hit Earth's surface. The odds against life in the universe are simply astonishing. Grasp what you are reading. Can every one of those many parameters have been perfect by accident? At what point is it fair to admit that science suggests we cannot be the result of random forces? Doesn't assuming that an intelligence created these perfect conditions require far less faith than believing a life-sustaining Earth just happened to beat the inconceivable odds to come into being? The article continues showing more proof of a god, including experts whose atheism is greatly shaken, it says, by recent developments. The fine-tuning necessary for life to exist on a planet is nothing compared with the fine-tuning required for the universe to exist at all. For example, astrophysicists now know that the values of the four fundamental forces, gravity, the electromagnetic force, and the strong and weak nuclear forces, were determined less than one millionth of a second after the Big Bang alter any one value, and the universe could not exist. For instance, if the ratio between the nuclear strong force and the electromagnetic force had been off by the tiniest fraction of the tiniest fraction, by even one part in 100 followed by 15 zeros, then no stars could have ever formed at all. Stunning. Multiply that single parameter by all the other necessary conditions and the odds against the universe existing are so heart-stoppingly astronomical that the notion that it all just happened defies common sense. It would be like tossing a coin and having it come up heads ten quintillion times in a row. Fred Hoyle, the astronomer who coined the term Big Bang, said his atheism was greatly shaken at these developments. He later wrote that a common-sense interpretation of the facts suggests a super-intellect has monkeyed with the physics, as well as with chemistry and biology. The numbers one calculates from the facts seem to me so overwhelming as to put this conclusion almost beyond question. Theoretical physicist Paul Davies has said that the appearance of design is overwhelming. And Oxford professor Dr. John Lennox has said the more we get to know about our universe, the more the hypothesis that there is a creator gains in credibility as the best explanation of why we are here. You probably have a watch. Without it, you would be lost in a world that demands people be on time. Some watches are more accurate than others. How accurate is yours? How long before it loses one second? Periodically, you adjust it by reckoning from a more accurate source. Whatever the source, it is also imperfect and has to be regularly updated, though not as often, to be in accord with the master clock of the United States at the Naval Observatory in Washington, D.C. Until 1967, naval astronomers observed the Earth's motion in relation to the heavens to accurately measure time. All U.S. clocks were set in relation to these precise measurements. It was God who made this master clock of the universe. He set the heavens in motion and man learned to use its wonderful accuracy. But God's great clock holds more marvels. In 1968, scientists built an atomic clock that uses cesium-133 atoms because they vibrate at the rate of 9,192,631,770 times per second. This is accurate to within one second every 30 million years. Imagine your watch was that accurate. Cesium-133 atoms never vary a single vibration. They are steady constant, reliable, and cannot be an accident of nature that just happens to always turn out exactly the same. God had to design the complexity and reliability of these atoms. No honest mind can believe otherwise. Men merely learn to capture what God designed for use in time measurement. The World to Come program is presented by the Restored Church of God which is headquartered in Wadsworth, Ohio, USA. The church prints and distributes a library of 80 books and booklets, 
they are given away free of charge with free shipping. This literature plainly answers the greatest questions on your mind, straight from God's Word. Visit rcg.org to read or order these materials. Doubters consider this. Scientists at the National Institute of Standards and Technology in Colorado have built an optical clock even more accurate by measuring time with light. Time is now measured in what are called femtoseconds, or a million billionth of a second. These clocks use mercury ions at their heart to count the number of times they vibrate in a second. Optical frequencies consistently oscillate at one million billion, or one quadrillion, times per second. By using lasers and cooled down mercury ions, scientists have harnessed God's precision to better measure time. Optical clocks only slip by one second every 30 billion years. This is 1,000 times more accurate than atomic clocks. As with the movement of the heavens, men have learned to capture the reliability of cesium-133 atoms and the movement of cooled mercury ions to count time with oscillations per second that never vary. Could such perfect order really be the result of an accident? With great time and effort, the world's finest watchmakers can at best devise relatively imprecise clocks. Can any fair-minded person believe the three highly precise clocks, the heavens, atomic, and optical clocks, came by chance? Are we to believe that very sophisticated, humanly devised watches required the effort and ingenuity of skilled, intelligent men to create them, but clocks of far greater sophistication, precision, and design developed on their own? How utterly foolish to believe! You've seen absolute proof only the greatest watchmaker, God, could have devised these greatest watches. What is the truth of modern science regarding the origin of all matter in the universe? Do scientists claim it has always existed? Or have they determined there was a moment in time when all matter came into existence? The latter answer is yes. But what is the proof? The first law of thermodynamics is matter and energy can be neither created nor destroyed. No natural processes can alter either matter or energy in this way. This means there is no new matter or energy coming into existence and no matter or energy passing out of existence. Saying the universe came into existence from nothing violates the first law of thermodynamics, established by the very scientific community now willing to ignore it. This law plainly demonstrates that the universe and all matter and energy within it must have had a divine origin, a specific moment in which it was created by someone all-powerful. With the discovery of radium in 1898 by Madame Curie came the knowledge that all radioactive elements continually give off radiation. Consider, uranium has an atomic weight of 238. As it decomposes, it releases a helium atom three times. Each helium atom has a weight of four. Now at 226, uranium becomes radium. Radium continues giving off additional atoms until eventually the end product becomes the heavy inert element, lead. This takes a tremendous amount of time. Just radium becoming lead requires 1,590 years. What's the point? There was a time when uranium could not have existed because it always breaks down in a highly systematic and controlled way. Not stable like lead or other elements, uranium breaks down. So there was a specific moment when all radioactive elements came into existence. Remember, all of them, uranium, radium, thorium, radon, polonium, protactinium, and others have not existed forever. This represents absolute proof that matter came into existence. In other words, matter has not always existed. This flies directly in the face of evolutionary thought, that everything gradually evolved into something else. The problem? You cannot have something slowly come into existence from nothing. Matter could not have come into existence by itself. 
No rational person could possibly believe the entire universe, including all radioactive elements that prove there was a specific time of beginning, gradually came into existence by itself. Try to build something, anything, from nothing. Even with your creative power engaged in the effort, you would never be able. You cannot, in a hundred lifetimes of trying, produce a single thing from nothing. Can any doubter believe everything in the entirety of the universe, in all its exquisite detail, came into existence completely by itself? Be honest, again, accept facts. This is proof that the natural physical realm demands the existence of a great creator. The second law of thermodynamics is best summarized by saying everything moves toward disorder, a condition known as entropy. This bears some explanation. Remember, evolutionists teach that everything is constantly evolving into a higher and more complex order. They believe things continue to get better and better instead of worse and worse. If water on a stove is at 150 degrees Fahrenheit and the burner is turned off, the temperature drops instead of rises. It moves toward colder, not hotter. Balls on hills always roll down, not up. Energy to perform any task changes from usable to unusable during the task. It will always go from a higher energy level to a lower one, where less and less energy is available. Applied to the universe, the second law of thermodynamics reveals that the universe is winding down, moving toward disorder, entropy, not winding up, or moving toward more perfect order and structure. In short, the entire universe is slowing down. Even evolutionists admit that the theory of evolution and this law are completely incompatible. Notice. Regarding the second law of thermodynamics, universally accepted scientific law which states that all things left to themselves will tend to run down, or the law of entropy, it is observed it would hardly be possible to conceive of two more completely opposite principles than this principle of entropy increase and the principle of evolution. Each is precisely the converse of the other. As Aldous Huxley defined it, evolution involves a continual increase of order, of organization, of size, of complexity. It seems axiomatic that both cannot possibly be true. But there is no question whatever that the second law of thermodynamics is true. Like a top or a yo-yo, the universe must have been wound up. Since it is constantly winding down, the second law of thermodynamics begs a great question. Who wound it up? The only plausible answer, God. We have established that creation demands a creator. Now some amazing scientific proofs of creation. Evolution is shot full of inconsistencies. Evolutionists have seized on many theories within the overall theory in an attempt to explain the origins of plants, animals, the heavens, and the earth. Over and over, these theorists try to explain how life evolved from inanimate material into more complex life forms until reaching the pinnacle, human beings. Yet, as one geologist wrote, it must be significant that nearly all the evolutionary stories I learned as a student have been debunked. The biggest reason so many theories within the overall theory of evolution collapse is because they contain terrible logic requiring great leaps in faith to believe. Here is one example of a debunked theory. Many evolutionists have tried to argue that humans are 99% similar chemically to apes and blood precipitation tests do indicate that the chimpanzee is people's closest relative. Yet regarding this, we must observe the following. Milk chemistry indicates that the donkey is man's closest relative. Cholesterol level tests indicate that the garter snake is man's closest relative. Tear enzyme chemistry indicates that the chicken is man's closest relative. On the basis of another type of blood chemistry test, the butter bean is man's closest relative. More people should weep for evolutionists. Let's consider the incredible complexity of life. Everyone has witnessed explosions. Have you ever seen one that was orderly? Or one that created a watch or a clock? 
or a single thing of exquisite design instead of chaos and destruction. If you threw a million hand grenades, you would see them produce chaos and destruction a million times. There would never be an exception. Consider the next quotes involving the likelihood of an explosion creating the entire natural realm of life on earth, let alone the beautiful magnificence and order seen no matter how far one looks into space. Dr. B. G. Ranganathan said, The probability of life originating from accident is comparable to the unabridged dictionary resulting from an explosion in a printing shop. And this only speaks to the likelihood of any life at all, rather than the most highly complex forms such as large animals or human beings. What of all the millions of kinds of life existing today? The English professor of astronomy at Cambridge University, Sir Fred Hoyle, also stated, The chance that higher forms have emerged in this way is comparable with the chance that a tornado sweeping through a junkyard might assemble a Boeing 747 from the materials therein. Consider the common mouse trap. Everyone is familiar with it, and most have used one. Which part of a mouse trap could you remove and it would still work? The answer, none. While ingenious, it is still a very simple mechanism. Since the mousetrap cannot be made any simpler, it represents a condition called irreducible complexity. Certain living organisms also cannot be simplified or reduced in complexity and survive. The removal of any one part causes the system to cease functioning. Irreducibly complex systems cannot be produced gradually by slight successive modifications from a less complicated precondition. They must exist exactly as they are, whole, complete, or they cannot exist at all. Take away any part and they cease to function and therefore to live. What are the implications of this? Charles Darwin, in his famous work, The Origin of Species, framed a giant problem for him and all evolutionists. If it could be demonstrated, he wrote, that any complex organ existed which could not possibly have been formed by numerous successive slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. Those are his words. Yet nature contains endless biochemical systems that cannot be reduced in complexity. They are sometimes referred to as molecular machines and, like a four-stroke gas engine, cannot be simplified and still function. The next part of this series will continue examining irreducible complexity and more powerful proof of the existence of God. There is much more evidence coming. In the meantime, request our free booklet, Does God Exist? Until next time, this is David C. Pack saying goodbye, friends. This program was made available by Restored Church of God members and donors from around the globe. Explore our vast library of literature and other World to Come programs, which are all made available free of charge. To order literature featured in this program, Call toll-free 1-855-828-4646. That number again, 1-855-828-4646.